Hey guys, hope you are doing well. So my latest seed order has come in uh, and I'm excited to finish up my winter sowing. So one of the seeds that I'm really looking forward to planting uh, is my purple milkweed. Uh, if you're interested in all of the seeds that I'm planting this year uh, in terms of native Ontario plants, please check out uh, my previous video, which I'll link below. So for this winter sowing, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be using a seed tray. So there's lots of videos uh, and resources out there on winter sowing using uh, milk jugs. So that is something that you can do. Some people also decide to uh, cold moist stratify, uh, putting seeds in wet paper towel. So it's up to you as to the method that you uh, wish to use to sow your seeds. So when we talk about cold moist stratification, this is an important process for a lot of our native seeds. The reason being is, is that these seeds need to go through a winter. It's almost like a safeguard for these seeds so that way they don't sprout too early. So when we think of cold moist stratification, we need cold and we need moist. Uh, so through that, uh, you can think about our seeds outside. When they drop off of our plant, they fall on the soil. They might be covered with some leaves or some dirt and then a layer of snow. So this kind of helps to break down that seed coat uh, and kind of wake up that seed once it gets warmer. Uh, if those two conditions aren't met, your seed isn't going to germinate. So the seed uh, could think that, you know, maybe it's still hanging up uh, in the seed pot. Uh, and it's cold, but it's not moist. Or it's moist, say, in the fall, uh, but it's not cold. Uh, so in order to have these seeds germinate, it is important to have both of these conditions. So some of these plants will require about 60 days of cold moist stratification. Most of your milkweeds will only require about 30. Um, but with that said, you can just sow all of your seeds uh, and put them out there. So I'm finishing up the last of my seeds. I do have some of them that are 30 days, uh, but because I'm sowing a mixture in these trays, I'm just gonna put them out there so that way they all have 60 days. So the tray that I'm using today is uh, fairly small. So the plants won't stay in these trays for too, too long. The reason why I'm sowing them in here instead of direct sowing them in the garden was because last year when I sowed things such as poppies, uh, sweet alyssum, and I also did bachelor buttons, hardly anything grew. Uh, so this is my way of making sure that things are gonna grow and that I'm not selecting and promoting weeds to grow in that process. So after they germinate, grow a few leaves, I'm gonna transplant those out into the garden. And for those of you who are curious what uh, seed tray this is, this is the seed tray that I'm using uh, for all of my plants, I just got these from Rona. So what I have uh, in front of me here is some potting soil. So I actually have a whole tray of, or not tray, a bucket of potting soil that I'm gonna fill in here. And after that, we'll continue on. So for my soil, uh, I make sure that it is moist. You can squeeze it, it's stuck together, but it's not um, dripping wet. So I'm gonna fill this up uh, so the soil that I used is a potting soil. So when you read through uh, or watch a lot of videos on winter sowing, one of the major concerns is, is that the soil dries out too fast. So if you use something like a seed uh, starting mix, that dries out relatively quickly, which is not good for a lot of your uh, native plants that you're trying to winter sow. So I am using uh, a pro mix potting soil uh, in this case. So let me finish uh, filling this up with soil and then we'll go through and we'll seed our seeds and then we'll go from there. All right guys, so as you can see, I have my seeding tray and I have filled up uh, each cell pretty much to the top uh, for this, just because when I water it, um, I'll be using a spray bottle. So a lot of the soil should be staying put and the seeds that I'm planting will be uh, at surface level. So I'm gonna fix this camera so that way you can see uh, the seeding of our purple milkweed. All right, so here is our purple milkweed. So because this plant or this packet of seeds uh, only has 30 seeds, I'm gonna be using uh, 30 cells uh, on here for these seeds just because it's been quite challenging to find uh, these seeds uh, at all. Um, so as you can see, here are what our little seeds look like. So I'm gonna sow these. Uh, and we'll see how it goes.
So here is my finished seed tray. You can see uh, a lot of the little light brown um, spots there. Those are our milkweed seeds that I put at the surface of the seed tray. Um, there were pretty much only 30 seeds. There were some broken seeds in there too, so that uh, occupies my 30th um, spot there. The remaining cells, the 42 cells, I decided to put some heart-leaved asters. So you can see those little um, almost white specks there are those seeds. So what we're going to do next is we're going to grab our spray bottle, spray everything down just to make sure that it's wet and that those seeds are making contact with the soil. So we're going to do that now and then we'll continue. All right, so I have my tray of seeds uh, all watered uh, so that way the seeds are making contact uh, with that soil. The next part is, is you're going to put on uh, your dome or your plastic lid. So I have my plastic lid here. This is just the one from uh, that seed starting tray. What I did though was I poked uh, little holes. I don't know if you can see those uh, well in the camera. So I have quite a few holes in here. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. About 20 holes uh, that are on or poked through uh, this seeding tray. So what that does is that allows for some air circulation. So if it gets too hot, uh, that hot air can escape. And if it rains or if there's any snow, some of that moisture can come in. So in order to make those holes, what I did was I used uh, this old a pumpkin carving tool and I had a candle. So I, what I did was I put this tool right beside the flame and once it got hot, uh, I would poke my holes. So make sure you do that in a well-ventilated area uh, so that way you're not breathing in uh, a lot of the, that smoke and those fumes. So after you have your lid, what you're going to do next is you're going to secure it uh, with some string and then it should be ready to go outside. All right, so here you can see my finished tray. I put on uh, some string to secure this lid. I also put on a little label, uh, both on the outside and the inside uh, of the dome, just to keep track. I did make some paper notes as well as to what uh, I seeded in there and how many, um, so it should be good to go. I also sprayed a little bit uh, of water inside just to make sure that uh, the seeds are able to stay nice and moist. So we will bring this outside. All right, you guys, so we're outside right now. It's like minus nine and it feels like minus 17. So quite chilly, you can see behind me there. Uh, that is uh, my little tray. I tied some rope onto that. Uh, so we're gonna find a cold uh, and shady spot for it to spend the next 60 days. So as you can see, I'm just choosing a shaded location here right beside the fence. It's a little protected uh, from the winds and from intense sunlight. And you can see I also put down some uh, chicken wire uh, just to make sure that the squirrels don't dig at it and that way it's secure. So I did put these ones out uh, a few weeks ago and then I also have uh, some over here. So I'm just going to put my remaining trays over along here uh, and then we'll see how they do. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, bye!